All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Village of Royal Palm Beach Special Magistrate hearing for Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. My name is Doug McGibbon. I'm your Special Magistrate. The first thing I'm going to do is swear everyone in, and we will swear everyone in a couple of times as strays come in the room, like the lady who just walked in. So everyone, please raise your right hand. Say, I do, and you're, we're done. Does everyone swear or affirm that the testimony they're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Everyone knows they're right from their left. This is a good thing. All right. As I like to say, if you have a code enforcement issue, you are in the right place. Um, this is how this will go. Most of the hearings today will either be fine assessment hearings or violation hearings. When you hear your name being called, please go over to that podium over there and identify yourself. It's got the little laptop. They'll open it for you. Uh, the village will put on their case. They'll ask you to look at their evidence and see if you object or not. Then you get to put on your case and question their witnesses if you want. That all flips when we get to the fine reduction portion of the hearings. Uh, those people have been through a violation hearing and a fine assessment hearing. They are asking for relief, so they will get to go first, and then the village will respond. I think I've hit all the highlights, so please take it away, Village of Royal Palm. Thank you, sir. Uh, Amity Barnard. Uh, Assistant Village Attorney, we're starting on page one of the agenda, case 22-0818-10432, Oliver Lane. Dom Stuck, sorry, Yopal, and this is a fine assessment hearing. Okay. Over there. Hello. Hi, what's your Hi. name? I'm actually, uh, my name is Pim Nachai Shod. I'm actually here on behalf of Somsuk. Okay. She actually currently out of the country due to the death in the family. Her husband passed away. Okay. Could you tell us what your name is again and spell your last name for us, please? Pim. The last name is N-A-C-H-A-I-C-H-O-T-E. All right. What? N-A-C-H-I-O-T-E? C-H-A-I-C-H-O-T-E. Okay. Okay. All right, so... Give them one second. All right, so village, please take it in, take it away. What, what's your relation to the respondent? Um, she's my ex mother in law. Okay, so you're. She's a rare, good ex mother in law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you showed up for her. Come on, could be that bad. Dina Foley, code officer for the village of Royal Palm Beach. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, permit information. All right, so you have a signed COVID green card, which means you have service. And the permit is for solar panels, something yes. rooftop and wiring, I assume. OK. So ma'am, those documents that I handed you, those are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to those documents? There's a notice documents for tonight's hearing and the previous order finding violation. Mm -hmm. Any objection? No. All right, okay, admitted without you. objection. All right, the problem here is that there has not been a final inspection on this permit. Mm -hmm. So it's an open permit, and they're only good for normally six months. So when it goes past the six-month stage and there's no inspection, the permit goes out, and it has to be renewed in order for it to go get inspected. Am I correct, Village? Yes. So she's saying yes. So she needs to go get the permit renewed so she can, and if she gets that done, will that stop the fine? It'll stop the fine, and then they need to make sure they get the final so it doesn't come back to us. Okay, so. Um, actually, because she said that they were going to install the solar system, but they never did, and I believe they, um, then it will go and close the Okay, so what, what I'm hearing over here from the actual permit tech is you need to yeah, close. Yeah, I think I spoke with you on the phone the other day. Yeah. Yeah, and she wants to close the permit out. Yes. But she has, as the homeowner, she has to sign that form. Is that possible? Because she is coming back on the 22nd. Is there any time for her when she comes back? No, you really need to get it emailed to her so she can scan it back to you, you so they can stop the fines. Okay. Okay, so okay. you're going to call Hunter again. He's, he's the person you're talking to in the yeah, building department. Yeah, I spoke department. to you earlier in the week. 
and you're going to ask her for the form so she mm -hmm. can email it to you so you can send it on to her to get signed and returned. Okay. okay. Because right now all I can do is, you know, we have an open permit. Days, right. I have to order a fine. Hopefully you can stop it. Then you can come back and you can ask for reduction because the project was never done. So is the fine starting today? Or? The fine will actually start 12 or 13 days ago. It started on 9-2, yeah, 13 days ago. So we're asking for 325 and continuing. Yeah. So as soon as the permit, what is it called, permit stopping form? Request to administratively close. So, so when the request to administratively close is rece received by the village, that will stop it? Once it's approved. Once right, it's approved. Yeah. Okay. So once that form has been turned in and approved, the fines will stop. Mm -hmm. And then you can tell your friend or your mother-in-law, former mother-in-law, to uh, come ask for a reduction because you never went through with the project. It's not so like they went and installed the air conditioner and then forgot to do it. They never, they never did it. So. so once you sign it and email it back to me, do I? You give it back to her. Do I have to come in, or I can? She crash can email it. You can email, yeah. email it to her, or she can email it directly to her. Mm -hmm. Does she need to get it notarized or anything? Just yeah. sign. Just, Just sign. sign. Okay. Okay. So I go and. Yeah, th there's going to be an order in the mail sent to the house. Oh. I guess. Where's this one sent? I can give you my card. Okay. Yeah, I can come up here and grab a card and we'll straighten this out sometime later in the week or next week. Okay. All right. 325 plus continuing is granted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, we're going to page 2, 22-0795, 127 Cordoba Circle, Iva Locklair. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, the previous order finding violation, dated 7-18-22. Verification of ownership is Exhibit 2. Pictures, Exhibit 3. And Affidavit of Compliance is Exhibit 4. Okay. All right, so we have a signed green card. You have service. Is this going to be a finding of fact? Or no, it's, it's under fine. fine assessment. Okay. All right, so you have service, you can proceed. No, they can see them right here. <laughs> Your name for the record, ma'am? Mine is Iva Locklear. Thank you, ma'am. Those documents I just handed to you are the exhibits the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to the documents? Okay. Hard to see them. <laughs> Oh, just, just take, take your time, the look at the pictures, they're on the screen as well, but let her flip Sorry, through. <laughs> yes, I've seen these. Can we have the pictures on the screen, please? They're up on that big screen there. Oh, okay. So, and this right here is the structure. The silver thing. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a tarp covered something. Right? Yes, their picture from 9-12, and then it was gone on 9-13. Okay. Correct. This, was, this has been out for 11 days, special magistrate, so we're asking for a $275 fine and not continuing. All right. Um... Because of where I am in the process, yes. you know, it's just I'm going to order a fine just because that's where we are, although it probably really doesn't matter. Is this her homestead property? Does it look like it? Is this her homestead? It is, but she only sits next door to the barn. No, don't there. worry. About, no, I'm, I'm about. I know. I know. Uh, I just retired my husband moving it. No, no, no. Stop, so stop, for, stop for a second. 42 years. No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because this is a $275 fine that we placed on the property. Because it's homestead property, they can't foreclose upon it. So when it either she passes away or sells it, somebody's going to get a, a check of two hundred seventy-five dollars to the village. So it's just going to sit there. And, and and thank you for stopping it because I've I've seen these things balloon up to tens and twenties and eighty, ninety thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, you're like looking at two hundred seventy-five bucks. It stopped. Thank Nothing's going to go on any further. And when you finally sell the property or you you pass it along, it'll it'll eventually get taken care of. Okay. So yeah, that's just where we are in the okay. process. It, 
And, and you're at the point where if you came in for a fine reduction, the cost of reducing the fine is still $250 <laughs> between filing and the attorney, so gotcha. I wouldn't even bother. All right. Okay? 275 no continuing is granted. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You'll get an order in the mail. Next, right. we're moving to page three near the center, 22-0989-11, excuse me, 10155 Oak Shelby Boulevard Target Corporation. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. And exhibit three, permit information. So my name is Brad Grout, uh, Director of Property Management for South Florida. Here right, representing- Stop, 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 stop. Could you spell your last name for us, please? Yep, G-R-O-U-T. Thank you. Okay, and we have a stamped green card, so I guess that is service. All right. What was your position, sir? I'm sorry. Uh, Director of Property Management, Thank South you. Florida. Thank you, sir. Okay, so basically saying your building permit is expired, and I guess unless you're done, you need to re-up it. If you aren't done, you need um, to. It actually was processed and complied today. Oh. Look at you. Yeah, we filed an extension, made, paid the fees. Uh, once that goes through, we'll schedule inspection about a week. Once we get inspection, if there's anything that needs to be resurrected, we'll take care of that in the next couple weeks. Okay, I think you're about done, aren't you? Or are you? I don't go to that Target Tons. What's that? I said I don't go to that Target Tons, but I kind of remember all this stuff being done, and then it's Yeah, this one's out. related to the drive up out front. Oh, okay. That we uh, make it easier to shop. So the permit was related to that, not inside the store. Great, okay. All right, so what is the fine, if any? Unfortunately, this one, again, is a 13 days, so it's 325 and continuing. $325. Oh, my God. Okay. Is that You're like 13 days late, so. I'm sorry, th I misspoke. 300 and not continuing. 300, no continuing. You were 12 days late. It keeps coming down. Sure. Uh, you were 12 days late in the permit renewal process, 25 bucks a day. Sure. Do you know if that will go to Minneapolis, or where does that go? <laughs> uh, it goes to the address on the tax collector's roll pursuant to Florida statutes. Target because Corp. If you leave me your business card, I can email it to you. Sure. Yeah, because what happens is they believe, they being the Florida legislature, that if you're making your property tax payments, that's probably a good address to send you notices to. Sure. The village it, doesn't get to pick this. It's a state statute. Typically headquarters, which is why these things happen. Yeah, well, typically <laughs> your mailroom is good at intaking, but I don't know about distribution. Sure. All right, great. Um, you're going to get his card, so. If he's got one. Do you I have, have a card? card on me? I do not. Do you have a card? Um, Does she have, have a card? Have Someone's got to have a card. Because Hunter's sick. <laughs> One of us has a card. Hunter has my card. Oh, Hunter even has her card. So call Linda and Linda will get you a copy of that order so you can follow up on it. Perfect. That'll be it. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank Stay you. dry. No continuing. 300 no continuing is granted. Thank you. We're moving now to... Page 5, violation hearings, 22-1194-793, Hibiscus Drive, Tricon SFR 2022, Borrower LLC. Code section 9-1 and 9-8, vents installed without a permit, hedges are over 4 feet. I observed this on 7-1-22, the notice of violation was mailed out 7-8-22 and was signed for on 7-11-22. The notice of hearing was mailed out 8-17-22 and was signed for on 8-22-22. We would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Pictures. All right, you have a signed green card. So you have service. Do, you have copies? Mm -hmm. Do we have a right respondent? Way. Okay, it's, this is at the violation phase, so we get, we get to fix things. All right, which one are you? What's your name, sir, for the record? Uh, John Scalia. And your relation to this entity? Uh, the realtor for the company. Those documents I handed you, those are the exhibits we'd like to enter into the record. Do you have any objection to those documents? No. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. 
and special magistrate for the record uh sections 9-8 that's the hedges are over four feet that's a finding of fact all right so they so they trim the hedges but they just need to get a uh permit for the fans no they've been cut this what they're saying someone cut the hedges i was out there yesterday oh okay so they cleaned yeah. it all up the hedges are done it's just okay. the fence so just the fence yeah the finding of fact means you you've done your job on the hedges okay you just have to get a permit for the fence. Okay. So how long do you, how long are you saying that he needs? We're for asking for compliance by nine twenty nine for the October twelfth fine assessment hearing or twenty five dollar a day fine. Nine twenty nine or ten what? Twelve. Twelve. Or twenty five dollars per day. Um, what's the day? Do, 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 do. I might give him a little bit more time just yeah. to get through permitting. The the fence is actually too high in the front anyway, so you're going to have to change that out. Okay. Is it just the front fence or is it all around? I, I can't see the back, so wherever. Yeah, yeah well, the front fence. fence I believe is a is is four feet. Yes. And the back fence is six feet, and I'm it, I can't really tell, but I'm guessing. Maybe the yeah, there's I'll, a part a part in front. I don't know. I can't mm -hmm. tell. There's it is a, the front. There's okay. a part in front that's going to be too tall. So as of right now, there's no fines on it. It'll start right. when he's done with these. I guess. Yeah, I'm, they're saying nine twenty nine, but I'm going to give you a little bit more time to get through permitting. So. Back me off a week from the 12th. That'll give an extra week. So October 10th, does that work? Oh, 10-10? Yeah, 10 that's, that's, that's fabulous. Okay, so if you get it permitted and, and the permit is issued by 10-10, yeah. yeah. you'll be good. You probably won't even have to show up at the meeting. Right. Um, if it's 90% of the way there, talk to them. They may or may not want you here. Okay? Okay. Because you're Thank getting you. along. Is that is that Thank his ca only case, or did he have more? Oh, okay. You get to sit down till the end. All right. We're going now to page six in the middle, 22 1295 212 River Buff Lane, Victoria Linder. Six, Victoria Linder, Halfway, River Bluff. Code section 622 105.5, uh, permit 213352 expired. This was written on 72122, the notice of violation. It's mailed out 72322 and was signed for on 72922. The notice of hearing was mailed out 8822 and was signed for on 81022. We'd like to enter the following into evidence Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership, Exhibit 4, Permit Information, Exhibit 5, Affidavit of Compliance. Okay. I think this way. All right. So you have a signed green card first, so you have service. You are, ma'am. Your name? Victoria Linder. I think you're almost done, Miss Linder, but they're going to show you papers because they have to. All right, so you have no objection, I take it? Okay. All right, so she's done. We just get a finding of fact. Finding of fact, yes, sir. Thank you. Finding of fact is granted. You're good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Now we're going to page seven, third one down, 22 0971, 148 Granada Street, Fred Carver Jr. So the code sections 2317 and 2318B. Um, the description, parking on or over the sidewalk and trailer parked on the driveway and trailer parked on the front lawn. Um, this is Margaret Hancoat's case. She observed this violation on 527-22. It was sent certified mail on 527-2022 and returned on 615-22. Notice of hearing was mailed on 714-22 and signed for on 716-22. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation. Exhibit two, notice of hearing. Exhibit three, verification of ownership. And exhibit four, pictures. All right, you have multiple signed green cards, so you do have service. And okay. Your name for the record, sir? Hello, um, my name is Fred Carver. Um, the owner of property 148 Granada Street. Thank you, sir. Those documents I handed to you are the exhibits the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to those documents? No. Thank All you, right, sir. admitted without objection. And special magistrate for your agenda, section 14.4, 
which is disabled vehicles being removed. Okay. 23. Is it just being removed or is it a finding of facts? No, sir, just being stricken. All right, so just draw a line. But the there. other two sections are findings of facts. Oh, the other two sections are findings of facts. Yes. So I just want to clarify. So you had a jet ski behind your property that's sinking? It, well, it's not sinking. It's just I just haven't, haven't had a chance to ride in a while. But I've since renewed the registration and everything else and in the process of uh, redoing my gate to pull it off the off of the uh, bankment. And you can on the actually, so this is the thing. So you can't have it on a trailer on the embankment. You can have it parked up on the embankment. That's okay to be there. Um, it does need a current registration, but she yeah. used the wrong code. That's why that was pulled. So I just wanted to clarify it because okay. she okay. would start a new case on that. All right. Well, and I then have, where I you have, have the trailer parked today is perfect. Okay. Yeah. On the side of the home. Well, we're working on it, but um, yeah. yeah, so I appreciate everything. But yeah. I do have the registration here for the jet ski, so that's okay, perfect. taken care of. And, I, uh, I think what she's trying to tell you is you can't put it on a trailer in the backyard, but if yeah. you you, you can have couple. it on the embankment, but you can't have the trailer on the embankment. Or so can he, he put can a couple the, of skids? He out can there? do skids, and they don't require a permit. Right, so do you know the part of the trailer that the jet ski actually sits on? They're called skids. They're yep, the yep. wooden parts that are usually covered with some sort of material, usually some slippery kind of ruggish kind of stuff. Right, right. You can put that on your backyard and put your jet ski on that. On the bank, you, not on in the, the bank, backyard. And you'd be yeah. fine. But I can't put the jet ski on the, the trailer, trailer in my backyard. The backyard. The trailer right. has to sit in the side yard because they're not allowed in the back. Okay. But you can put it either on the grass or you can build some skids, like I said, like your trailer, exactly like your trailer, and ride your jet ski up there unless you want to put it on the grass. So currently it's um, parked on the bank. That's, That's correct. fine. It's good. That's fine. You can leave it just like that. Okay, so it just I was, has to display current registration then. Okay, okay. Yep. So I was kind of confused. Yeah, about I'm it. just I'm giving you some more stuff. If you want to get it off the grass, you know, so it sits out of the water or off the grass, you can put it on some pieces of wood. Like okay, you, all right. But Fair you just enough. can't put the trailer back there. That's yeah. all. Fair enough. Okay. 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 So you're gonna get an order called a finding of fact, which means don't do it again. Gotcha. Fair enough. Finding of fact is granted. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a Next, great day. You too. You Next too. case is uh, same page, 22-0993-145, Cordoba Circle, Mary and Annie Benjamin Joseph. This also is Ms. Hancock's case. The code section is 124C, description garbage can in public view. This violation was observed on 620 or 6222. It was sent certified mail on 6322 and returned unclaimed and posted. Notice of hearing went out on 824.22 by certified mail, and it also was returned unclaimed and posted. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation and Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing and Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Pictures. All right, so your Affidavit of Service gives you service. You can proceed. Your name for the record, ma'am? Is that all? Annie Joseph? Thank you, ma'am. Those documents I handed you are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objection to those documents? No. All right, Thank admitted you. without objection. All right, according to the village, your garbage. I can't see the pictures in here. Sorry. No, the Go pictures are up oh, here. Okay. Yeah, the, according to the village ordinances, you need to screen your garbage cans. I thought it was for the garbage cans being in front of the house. I didn't realize on the side of the house was a problem. No, it's not the side of the house. It's. It, First, it's not supposed to be in the front of the house, I don't think. I know I got... I, no, it just has to be screened from just, view. So if they wanted to, to put it on the so front porch behind a hedge, they could. Yeah, I mean, since you have all those pavers there, you kind of need to put a piece of lattice there. You know what lattice is? No. Oh, God. Um, <sighs> yeah, it's, it's... I mean, my garbage cans, I honestly thought it was for in front of the house, but my garbage cans have been like that since I moved. It, it's, believe me, you, you, there are millions of garbage cans in the village that are not in compliance with the law here. And I apologize, I just didn't no, no, know. It, and you probably looked around and said, if they can do it, I can do it, or something like that. But all you need to do is put a piece of lattice, which is usually a crosshast wood or plastic thing, okay. in front of your garbage cans, and that will screen them. 
from public view. And it doesn't have to be. Does it just stand up? Because there's really nothing. I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't tried anything. So if you go to your local how-to stores, they actually sell things that are self-supporting okay. that you can anchor to your wall as well to keep it just from being able to blow away. Okay. And they will, they will screen the garbage can. You can put it in your garage. Um, you could put it on the other side. There's there's many of options. If you wanted to put it up in this front area to the left of your garage, if you have plants in there that you can tuck it behind, there's all different ways. Okay. No, you just have to screen it. Uh, and here's something for you and everyone else in the room. Once you fix this, it doesn't count. It does not. It does not count. And why I'm saying that, it does not count until you call the ladies and you have them inspect. Because once you call them and you have them do an inspection, they will do something called an affidavit of compliance, which will be a form in your file that says, on this date, I came by and the problem was fixed. And that way it keeps you out of trouble. Because I've literally had people leave this meeting and fix the problem that night. But they wouldn't get credit for it unless they called to have them look at it. So once you proudly put your lattice up, give them a call so they can inspect it. Is there a number? There will be a number on the order that I'm going to, that they're going to send you on, that I'm going to sign. On all that paperwork, our number's listed on every piece of paper we send out. Okay, okay great. And what are your dates on this one? We're asking for compliance by October 27th or appearance at the November 9th fine assessment hearing or $25 a day fine. All right. So 1022-11-9? 10-27. 10-27-11-9. All right. So you have two months to do this. I'll get to the so you have a plenty of time, but just yeah, go to just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and, and and look at Lattice and 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 look and talk to them. They'll they'll be able to set you know. Now, do I still have to pay the fine? You are not at the fine stage; you're at the violation stage. So, so as long as I take care of it, I'm as long okay. as you take care of your violation on time and get them to inspect it, no, your house is way too pretty to get fined. So yeah. I'll, all you have to do is put a little screening in front of your uh, That's fine. garbage can, can and you'll that. be you'll be great. Okay. Thank you. All right, eleven twenty-seven. Oh, twenty-five dollars. Ten ten twenty-seven. Ten twenty-seven. Eleven, 11 nine twenty-five. Yes, sir. It would be a twenty-five dollar a day fine if you don't fix it by October twenty-seven. Okay. All right. Thank you. Take Moving care. to page eight twenty-two dash one two two six one two three six Bob White Road Laura Placencia. This also is Ms. Hancock case. The code section is 2318B, description prohibited vehicle. This violation was observed on 7-14-22. It was sent out certified mail on 7-19-22, and it was signed for on 7-21-22. Notice of hearing was sent out on 8-24-22, and it was signed but not dated. We would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation and notice of hearing. Exhibit two, I'm sorry. Exhibit one, notice of violation. Exhibit two, notice of hearing. Exhibit three, verification of ownership. And exhibit four, pictures. All right, you have a COVID green card and you have a scribble green card, so you have service. Your name for the record, ma'am? Laura Placencia. Thank you. Those documents I just handed you are the exhibits the village would like to enter into evidence. Do you have any objections to those documents? Um, They're the notice documents for tonight's hearing. The pictures. Oh, the question again? I'm sorry. Do you have any objection to the paperwork, to the documents? I have not a chance to review it, but um, I do. <laughs> I, well, no, 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 stop. We're going to go through the documents first, and then you can tell your story. You can flip I, through them quickly. Okay. Yeah, I, I've had this before. Okay, so no do you objection to, to the document? No, okay, no, admitted without objection. Okay, sorry. I All right, and, and we're just going to focus on the picture. I take it the tow truck is not an allowed vehicle in the town? Right, it's listed as a prohibited vehicle in our prohibited vehicles list. Okay, so they're saying that there's a tow truck pictured. The picture's up there, you see? Yeah, yeah not that one, it's the other one. That one there, the, the one in the, there you go. You're saying the tow truck is a prohibited vehicle, it's parked at your property, and it's not supposed to. Yeah, um, and I, do you, I, I want, I'd like to explain. Um, last, I think about, I'll tell you when. On June 11th of 2021, I came for a hearing 
or actually this is when they sent me the order because I came for a hearing for the truck and other things, the driveway that I, I, I had a uh, uh, permits for. And I came for the hearing and the literal words of the judge was, you're, get out, you're, you're done, because I, I had already fixed everything. As for the truck, I brought in some evidence and I don't know, hopefully it's helpful. We do a lot of police directed tows and with the fire department and they have, I brought their contract, they have like a 25 minutes response time. And we do have storage for our trucks. We have a storage that we pay for, but we need to keep at least one of the trucks home because when the officers call, we have to be there within 25 minutes. Okay, and so, so stop for stop. I do not have the power to alter a code of ordinances of Royal Palm Beach. The only people that have that power are the village council. So if you want to try to get an exception from the village council to allow emergency vehicles subject to police call to be allowed on property, that's something you can try to do. But you cannot get me to do it because I don't have the power. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that it was somewhere else to, to do it. I, I thought that um, I did... Um, call a lawyer and they did say something about that but I thought that I could get the uh, form here because he said that I need to fill out an application for that and it'll have to go under review but, but, but I thought it was clear here. about the process though you can't vary a prohibition this is a prohibited vehicle it would be a code change they would have well to no they have to change the code they have Correct. to go before so the council no, yeah, I just want to be clear it's not a variance process it's a, it's a no no it's not a variance it's a policy it's a, call. yeah they'd have to say tow trucks except they want an exception it would be tow because they don't want to have anyone else with tow trucks in the town. So, so you're you're asking me for something that I can't do. I cannot change the law. All I can do is apply the law. So. Yeah, uh, the thing is that um, we worked with Margaret Hanktor in the past. When we initially got the truck, she um, we were parked in it on the sidewalk. I know that it's prohibited by the city of Royal Palm Beach, but then she mentioned that we if we got a driveway an offense that we could not that she could not see the truck when she passed by that it was going to be fine after we spent fifteen thousand dollars on the fence and the driveway she said i can still see the truck and you can and it's a record 36 foot um my other um the other thing uh i thought records that were less than 36 feet could be parked except on the hours of between eight and and five excluding the uh, weekends Meaning it cannot be parked from 8 to 5. I don't know where you would have gotten. That's not our code. says prohibited vehicles cannot be parked in the village except for loading and unloading for one hour. And then it goes through and it specifically lists and defines out prohibited vehicle. So we have multiple vehicles that are prohibited. A tow truck, a bus, limousines, um, commercial work vehicles, semi-trailers, semi -trailers. Uh, vehicles with three axles. I mean, there's a big list. And can I at least get an extension to see if I could file that? Um, uh, well, you're going to get the same amount of time. Well, I don't know. I don't know what time you're going to get because you are asking for a total change in the law. They need to move the truck before that they change the law. So right, and and I want to clarify that you did come to hearing for this once before. I know, and, and it was a order. finding of fact. I I brought it. I brought the order. Okay, assessing no fines. I understand, but I want you to to also be clear that when you when you get an order of a finding of fact, if you violate that code section, you can be written as a repeat violation with an automatic fine. But I, then you, I, but you I, didn't get that I, didn't happen here. No, that didn't happen. But so I want her to be aware of it. They've given you additional time here because you've already had this problem once. They could have said, "Tag, you you don't get any time. You can't fix it." So that right now they're giving you some time to fix okay. it. What time um, are you trying to give them? Compliance to fix by nine twenty nine or the October twelfth fine hearing or twenty five dollar a day fine. But again, to Linda's point, the village could have cited you for repeat violation and started a fine of five hundred dollars per day the minute that she saw the tow truck back. So. The tow truck has to be out by November, well, what is it, September 29th. Yes, September and 29th. someone needs to call them to make sure they verify that on the 29th it's not there, which is you or he. Okay. So you have a few weeks to figure out what to do with it, but you're asking for a code change in front of a council, and you know, 
that's going to take a while. That's many, many months. That's many, many months. Okay. According to their attorney. So okay. you can you can do whatever you want to legally, but you need to get that vehicle off the property by the 29th of September, and it needs to be inspected, or you will end up being in front of us for a fine and hearing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All right. <clears throat> Next. We are going to find mitigations on page nine. First one is 19-1263-122 Gibraltar Street, Susan Freeman and Ronald Gindoff. would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, fine mitigation request. Exhibit 2, order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. Okay. <clears throat> Your names for the record? My name is Donna Cameron, and Susan has asked me to be here to represent her as a, I'm a realtor. Um, and so they've asked me to speak on their behalf. Dottie? Realty. Donna Cameron is Donna. my name. C A M E R O N. And is that who's with you? Susan, she's the owner. Susan Freeman, thank you. Okay. And special magistrate, the fine amount in this case is twenty three thousand nine hundred. I have a simple question for these. Why should the fine be reduced? So uh, Susan and her spouse have had um, extensive health issues since two thousand nineteen. Um, they've had uh, pain pumps put in, uh, knee surgery. They took care of their mother who had uh, died of COVID. Um, so they've had some pretty extensive issues. They can't afford the house anymore. The upkeep is too much. Um, the cost of it is too much. So I've offered to help them out. I got a contractor to bring bring it into compliance. I met Miss Foley out there. Um, Everything has been brought into compliance, and they're asking for a reduction. Okay. Because they have a lot of medical bills and, you know, everything is just. Do you have an amount you would suggest? No, that's up to you. <laughs> no, it's up to them or me too, but what's the village say? It's, it's at your discretion, special measure. We're not opposing reduction. We'd be amenable to reducing it to $5,197.78 payable by November 14th. I'm sorry, how much was that? $5,197.78. Okay, and that would be what's due? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If, if uh, granted by the magistrate. Will that do? Sure. Can you read it back to me again? 5197. I'm points. sorry, 59. 5197. Yeah. Okay. Point seven eight. Okay. By 11. November 14th. One, four, one four. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Granted. Thank I'll you. sign that order. Next, we're on the top of page 10, 12-1334, 107, Venetian Lane, Melvin and Picton, L. Garnet, Sharon Green, and Carol Harris. Ooh. We would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, fine mitigation request. Ex exhibit 2, order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. Okay. Your name what for the record, sir? Oh, first name is Tri and last name is Ahon. Can you spell both of those, please? Uh, T-R-I and last name is H-U-Y-N-H. And your relation to the property? I am the property owner at this time. You're the new owner. Yes. Okay. Special magistrate, the fine amount is six thousand three hundred dollars. Oh, not bad. All right. Why should the fine be reduced? Um. This 
violation that happened to the first owner, sir, and then I'm the third owner. And then this is like happening in the middle of nowhere. And I'm trying to um, do a refinance on the house right now. And then this is, um, you know, stopping me to uh, do it. And then, um, you know, and I also need to get it, uh, you know, released or clear out with a small amount of fee. So. Okay. So this, so you're arguing that this wasn't your fine to begin with, but you bought it. Yes, sir. You bought it with the fine and it, yes, no sir. one took care of it. So it's sort of a sticking uh, fine clean, to the property. Some, yeah. Do you have an amount you would suggest? Was was that? I'm sorry. What amount would you suggest if you want to reduce? <laughs> uh, she's saying zero, but no, okay. All right, zero probably won't fly. But what does the village say? The village would be willing to reduce it to the village's cost. The village was, the village's lien was foreclosed. Apparently, the title company is not accepting that, despite our correspondence that legally our lien is of no legal consequence anymore. But um, 46113 by 1114. And that's the village's cost up to this moment and doesn't cover the additional cost to release the lien. But the village would be okay with reducing it to that. Okay. For some reason, you're, uh, somebody's company just doesn't like the law, so they want some some actual releases filed in the public record. So that release will cost $416 or 46116. 13. 13. God. Sorry. The math. 46113 payable by 1116. 14. 14. What is it again, sir? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sir. Uh, 461 what? I'm sorry. 46113. I'm not going to say another number. I'm stopping <laughs> this. Granted. Maybe down to like 26113, you know. Yeah, and you'll get an order, and you can pay it off, and then it will become off the property. <laughs> and um, I also have another question. Um, My closing is uh, two more days from now. And then um, how do I get that clear? Um, you're going to take Linda's card. Um, and Linda, uh, you're going to email Linda and say, could you please confirm that my fine has been reduced to this number, payable by that date, and she will say if yes. possible, I could... I And we can send the draft order. It would be an unsigned order, but it would be a draft, and your title company should, should accept that. And the video footage of tonight's hearing should be available as well. Okay. How about I come tomorrow and then pay the fee? And then no, because the, there's, the problem is going to be... Unless you pay cash. And the title company will probably go, they'll probably go, uh, Ms. Walker, is this, is this real? Is this true? And, they'll, and she'll go, yes. And then they will be able to do this. Okay? Thank you, sir. Good luck with your refi. All right. Special Magistrate, we're going back to page 9. I'm sorry, I skipped over one. You skipped the one. Yeah, at the bottom of the page, 18-0027, 223 Las Palmas Street, PAH 2015, one borrower, LLC. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, the fine mitigation request and the agent authorization form. Exhibit 2, the order assessing fine, the recorded order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, the affidavit of compliance. And your name again for the record, sir? John. He's the, the nephew of the Supreme Court Justice. Come on. Yep. Mr. Scalia. <laughs> How can you forget that? Thank you, Judge. Just wanted it on the record. <laughs> And you're probably maybe tangentially related to them. My, actually, to my, my dad 15th knows. cousin or something. Right, right. <laughs> All right. So how much is this one? And this one, the fine amount is 38400 You know, I just had a conversation with one of my other clients who likes to do $250 a day. And I'm like, you do know that it does work out to a lot of money. And then I said, yeah, I, I added it up. It was like 8750 I was so wrong. It's ninety-one thousand dollars a year. Yeah. 
So this That's is from lot. 2018. Yeah. yeah, this is this is not horrible. It's bad, but it's not horrible. Yeah. Like like well, 2018 till now, four years at 91,000. Could you imagine? I'm doing one in Pompano for 282000 on the 21st. Ooh, okay, well, <laughs> hopefully this won't be horrible. What is your uh, position in Village of Royal? Uh, we would not be opposing reduction. I can give you our number or we can hear from the respondent. Our number is $8,043.91, payable by November 14th. 804391? Yes, sir, by 11-14. And sir, what if, is I pay, your... if I pay this month, can I go lower? I can pay it quick. Can I go cut that in half? I pay it this month. That's yeah. at the discretion of the special magistrate. Because of your persistence, seventy five hundred by eleven fourteen. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Because you did good on the other one too. As long as you're helping, we're helping. You would like a card. We are going to have to order some more cards, cards for tonight. her. <laughs> Next, we're on page 10 again. Second one down, 18-0643-1125, Rap City Way. Giovanna Acevedo and Eduardo Bedoya. <clears throat> All right, tell us what your names are. Eduardo Bedoya, owner of 1125 Rhapsody Way. Got it. And you are? Vincent Sedano, S-O-D-A-N-O. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, the fine mitigation request. Exhibit 2, the order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. Okay. Mm. Ah, Deutsche Bank. Okay, what's the amount of the fine? It is 38100 All right, why should the fine be reduced? Um, first of all, the, um, they send all, all the information to the uh, Dutch Bank Natural Trust. We never get any letter in our own mail. So um, about that, that was 2018, and by then the actual Dutch Bank never changed the address of the actual. I mean, that was a kind of a history there because the um, this, this uh, bank, Oh, yeah, he, he can explain better than that. Okay, the, the bank, um, Deutsche Bank, held a mortgage on the property. They were going through foreclosure in a time period of 2011. Um, that loan had been sold. They never rescinded that, um, the, the, the notice of foreclosure. They never took they never took their name off, and they, the homeowner was never aware that the property was still in Deutsche Bank's name until last year when they went to attempt to file for a permit. They know, they know, according to Palm Beach County, it was in, still in Deutsche Bank's name. It only recently has been, so all the mailings was going to Deutsche Bank, and ne the, he was never aware of the violations or the hearing of violations to be able to, to correct any of the, the violations. Until recently, when he put the property for sale and it came back in title search, that there was this pending violations and these fines on the property. Oh, this sounds like a law school exam question. Yeah. Uh, how, did, how did we get Deutsche Bank on the... Well, the they were issued a they, certificate of title in September of 2010. There was a certificate of title? Yeah, they got a certificate of title, and then it never went back. I can't explain why. <clears> um, so, legally, they got a certificate of title out of a court foreclosure case. And legally, and when, when you record it, that certificate of right. title, ba-bam. You know? So, I don't and know. You're required to send it to where the property appraiser and tax collector say, is, is who they say the owner is, and that's who we sent our notices to. Right, and so... Last year when they were notified, it's now been corrected and now put back into uh, Bedoya's, um, their name. But prior to that, they had no, no knowledge of any of this. Yeah, I understand. It's a, it's a problem, but it's really not the village's problem. It was Deutsche Bank and your client's problem, and the client didn't understand the problem until they tried to do something with the property. Because I think they probably settled their foreclosure somehow, but 
I mean, with the circumstances, Deutsche Bank we're asking never. for the mercy of the village and of the magistrate to try to come to some kind of agreement with us. Yeah, well, it's not going to be 38 grand, believe me. So what is the village's going? We're, again, not opposing reduction. Uh, our number is $7,987.33, payable by November 14th. <clears throat> now, what is your number? Because I still have something to do with this. So do you have a suggestion? Because I, I understand the problem, but it's not a village-created problem. And the village is required, as you've probably heard me earlier today, to send notices to the address on the tax collector's role. And the tax collector role had the proper entity as far as they knew. So what? What do we do? Well, um, honestly, we were trying to to have a zero on that, but uh, I know it's, it's it's something that uh, is it's not our goal. It's not, if I would know, I mean, as a owner, if I would hear, see a notice of that I was going to have uh, two, uh, $25 per day, I believe that's what it is, or $50 per day, I would actually call, have a re-inspector or something like that, but uh, since I didn't know about the fine, I mean, there is not a way for me to know about that. So that's what I'm trying to actually um get your <clears throat> see but you know you, you're understanding that's your position but the village has also hired this person gone through two hearings tried to get people's attention to do these sort of things i don't know if they ever posted anything well before we get here we give a courtesy notice and the courtesy notice is either hand delivered we knock on the door and either if you don't come to the door, we leave it on the door, or we give it to the person that answers the door. So we do make effort before we even get to a violation. Right. So I mean, the notification in reference to the, the citations say that you know it's feet parking on the grass where they no longer park in that area, and it was corrected almost immediately at that point. And the other one was for a, a resin shed, um, which has now been moved because we were made aware that that was the problem. Um, so it was something that was easily corrected. It just it um, wasn't correct, but it wasn't correct. That's the problem. See, uh, I'm stuck here in the middle. No, because the shed you're, there's you're, no knowledge <clears throat> that there was a violation of hearing and things like that to move the shed. And then so so we're, we're talking, we're asking for the. I mean, eight thousand is more than what they can afford to do at this time. They're in the process of selling the house because of an absolute need. It's not because they have the funds to do so. And there's there's so we're we're asking for the mercy of the village to try to take extreme consideration in the circumstance. Which I'm trying to do, right. but I'm trying to get a number out of you because I, I can't. W we can do 500. I mean, it's, honestly, I think that's. See, okay. once again, your $500 won't cover the costs of what these people have had to do because of your play fight with Deutsche Bank. But I mean, it's not, it's, like not it's not their fault that Deutsche oh, okay. foreclosed. It's not their fault that Deutsche got the title stuff wrong. You almost should be suing Deutsche Bank for contribution for creating this situation. And I'm trying to get a realistic number out of you because the village is not going to come out of this, you know, under under paying their lawyers because you didn't follow through with your foreclosure. In, in reality, that's information that we're not, we're, not, we're not aware of the expenses that went into that. So, I mean, we're, we're doing and trying to make come to an, a fair agreement and trying to do the right thing here. Um, we want to make sure we're, we're doing it right. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to come up with something. I mean, uh, 500 does not fly because that doesn't cover her costs. It, it costs $250 just to release the link. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's it, that. Is a $1,000 would be okay? You're selling the property? Yes, sir. All right. I'll do 15, 1500 And that's just because of the notice issue. By eleven fourteen, sir. By eleven fourteen. Okay. And, and, and same thing is uh, my closing is in um, uh, this coming Friday. So <laughs> if I can get uh, a, a tip from you guys, uh, <coughs> they can actually pay you guys directly on that end. Like that's that's gonna have to be. I don't know if we have enough cards left. Do we have any more Linda cards? Linda's gonna spend all day tomorrow while I'm golfing answering emails. Uh, Uh, you're going to need to save those because we got at least one more party here. And um, I talked to you about the, uh, the, the, other the, the other one that's on the it's docket. Okay. Besides being rescinded. And can we get a letter for that one as well? 
No, it's just going to be part of your email. You want letters for closing in two days, please. We'd be lucky to get an email response. <laughs> <coughs> Let's not be, uh, you know, overselling our position here. If you've got some relief, go away. I'm Have fun. I'll, I'll, she'll she'll talk. She'll send uh, the Thank stuff, you. and hopefully, the, the closing people know how to do this. They do it all the time. Eleven. Eleven fourteen. Last one is on, next one, excuse me, is on uh, page 11, 13 0391, 1099 Moonlight Way, Rufino Rodriguez and Tammy Y. Alonso. There's actually three cases. I'll read them all in, Special Magistrate. Next case is 15 2212, 1099 Moonlight Way, Rufino Rodriguez and Tammy Y. Alonso. And 17 0792, 1099 Moonlight Way, Rufino Rodriguez and Tammy Y. Alonso. And the affidavit of compliance as Exhibit 4. Okay. So you might as well just tell me the amounts in the different cases. Yes, sir. 13-0391, the fine amount is $1,375. Oh, that's good. 15-2212, the fine amount is $2,450. And 17-0792, the fine amount is $9,800. <clears throat> so I was expecting 38000 38000 38000 Kind of happy right now. Not Your name's for the record? Hi, good evening. My name is Viviana Busutil. Um, do you need me to spell my last name? Please. Yeah. Okay, yes, I know. B as in boy, U, S as in Sam, U, T, I, L. And present with me, I have the homeowner. And that is Tommy Alonso? Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right, so. You've, 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 you've been here and you've seen, so go ahead. We're first on it. Well, first of all, good evening. Um, so we're here on the fine reduction. Uh, basically, what we're asking is a fine reduction. Uh, this was the case, like you mentioned before, everything was fixed right away. They just didn't know the process of letting everyone know that it was fixed, and that's how it became an issue. I think the homeowner did try to attempt to come back but there was a little bit of a language barrier which is why I'm here today um huh? yeah uh, there was a little bit of a language barrier and I guess she didn't come back to the final she came to one hearing but not the final hearing is what I'm understanding um, unfortunately the homeowners are going through a divorce and I've been going through a divorce for three years um, so the home um, Oh, five years. I'm sorry. <laughs> They've been going through the Jeez. divorce for five years, and the home is the main issue of it. So um, we are asking if the fine could be reduced. I don't know if they could say their amount first, or you want to say their amount. Um, I don't care. I'd like to hear their amount. This is um, poker game now here. I know. <laughs> um, so our amount, um, we were thinking uh, $2,000. Okay, what's the village's amount? See if we get a different two, three. Yeah, ours is a little higher. So the first case, 13-0391, 657-12 by 1114, 15-2212, $884.85 payable by 1114. And the third case, 17-0792, $2,361.17 by 1114. All right, so that's two, Roughly three, thirty-five hundred, thirty-eight hundred, somewhere in there. Thirty-nine. Math skills are bad. Thirty-nine oh three fourteen. Thirty-nine oh three fourteen. See, look at that. They have calculators and they're smartish. All right, so again, we would just like to take into that violations were, you know, based on, I, I believe, um, a car being parked slightly on the sidewalk or the grass being overgrown and that it was corrected right away. Again, it was just a matter of not understanding the process that not only did it need to be corrected, but they needed to let the village know. So there was no ill intent um, behind not 
not coming into compliance. <clears throat> I'm still stuck on the five-year divorce. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what gets, guess that's what gets me more than anything. I, I did my sister's divorce, and I managed to do that in a little over 10 weeks. I you know, she didn't even appreciate it, and she didn't realize I set a freaking land speed record for a Florida divorce. Like so, 10 whole weeks? So I'm like, okay, five years? I think years. this homeowner could attest to that. Unfortunately, I guess divorces cost money. <laughs> yeah. Well, There's no, not a lot of pro bono attorneys out there. Uh, no, well, my wife was a secretary at a divorce firm. Boy, was she happy to leave. All right, let me. These, of course, are the hardest things for me to do because everyone gets mad at me. No one's like, oh, you lose. Then, then, then they're happy. Oh, you win. Then they're unhappy. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start out with case number 17-792, $1,750 by 11-14. On the case number 15-2212, $500 by 11.15, and on the case number 13-391, $250 by 11.15, which makes it $2,500 by 11.15. 11.14, sir? 14. Okay, 14. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank we'll you. get orders Thank in the you. mail. Thank you. Take care. Our condolences. <laughs> Are we have a closing? When's your closing? I said, when's your closing? See, so you're late. <laughs> okay. Two fifty five hundred seventeen fifty. I think we're going back to page four. It's no, we're, we're swearing people in. Yeah, yeah, we can do that too. Okay. All right, the two new people in the room because you're. Oh, I've got to wait till Quicksilver finishes talking. All right, lady and gentlemen, please raise your right hand. We're swearing you in because you are newish. You swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Do you also, ma'am? Okay, so they're sworn in again. Well, for the first time, so. Who are they and where are they on our agenda? The first one is page four. Good. Third one down, 22-0958, age 61, Azalea Drive. All Sears right. Saint Manouche. I'd like to enter the following, oh, excuse me. Um, Code section 2657, structure built without a permit. I observed this on 524-22. The notice of violation was mailed out 525-22 and was signed for. The notice of hearing was mailed out 824-22, and I have actual service. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. Exhibit 5, affidavit of compliance. Finding of fact is granted. You didn't have to say a word. Thank you for fixing the problem. Don't put a shed there again, or a structure, whatever it was. Okay, thank you. If you want to put something up there, just get a permit. Okay. You're good. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Is next it going is, to be as easy? Next is page 5, 22-1102, 1181, Grandview Circle, Stephen, excuse me, Leonard Stephen Giacco. This on page 5. Second one down. 
Oh, there we go. Okay, number 15 in our... Code section 2318B1A and 2318B3B prohibit a trailer and vehicle parked on the front lawn. Observe this on 622.22. The notice of violation was mailed out 624.22 and was posted. The notice of hearing was mailed out 814.22 and was signed for on 815.22. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, pictures. All right. Uh, please state your name for the record, sir. Leonard Giacco. Thank you, sir. Sure. All right, she's shown you some documents. There's some pictures on the screen. They're going to ask you if you object to any of these. Any objection to those documents, sir? They're the notice documents for tonight's hearing, and the photographs are on the screen. Uh, that looks like my house. Okay. <laughs> no objection to the documents. That's just that's just technical stuff. They just want to make sure that the address is right. And yeah, yes, that's stuff. correct. All right, um, so I would guess the prohibited trailer is a little too big. Yes, and special magistrate's. 2318B3B is vehicle parked on the front lawn defining a fact. That is a scion of some kind, I think. Is that a scion or what? Is it a cube? It's one of those cars. One of those squarish things. I had a. I, I recently moved, so I had a big, a large box truck that was parked in the square. No, no, no. There's, there, look, you look at the picture up on the screen? Up there? It's Are like you the talking Kia, about the, the Kia? The little green, green egg? Thing. Yeah. The little green thing's been moved, so it's defining a fact. <laughs> Yeah, your bigger problem is a trailer, and the biggest problem with your trailer is, is big. Mm -hmm. It's what's the biggest allowable trailer in the village? Can't, the height can't be over um, ten feet, and the length twenty. So you can't have a you can have a twenty foot or less trailer that can be ten feet or less, right. or less than ten feet. So nine feet, eleven inches would be acceptable. Right. But the so the problem is that when I moved. And she said the trailer was looked long, and then she was going to come and measure it, and then I never heard from her again, so I thought it was okay. So now I don't even have – and they said they did it by the satellite and said it was two feet too long. Well, well here's the question. How long is your trailer? What's that? How long is your trailer? The, I don't actually know how long the trailer is, but according to them, it's 22 feet. Well, and, here's, here's the deal. You don't need according to them, you need according to you. You need to go out there and measure the trailer. If the trailer is 20 feet, then their satellite's off. But if their satellite's right and it's 22 feet, it's two feet too long. I, so, I mean, obviously, that's why I'm here, because it, for this much, they're going to... Yes. It's such a hardship to... No. It's, it's a rule of the village. You know, for, if that much is not a hardship, then that much isn't a hardship. And then the guy's food truck in the front yard isn't a hardship. And then the other guy's semi-tractor trailer isn't a hardship. And then the limo's not a hardship. Y you got to stop at the rules or you've got to change change your location. You have to you understand, too, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, unfortunately. You know, I, I had no idea. I thought we were... I thought we were cool. I moved the... Uh, no, unfortunately. I moved the box truck. I moved the tr truck from parking on the side. And... I mean, you have to understand my point of view. I, I totally understand that the the city wants all the houses to look nice and somewhat uniform or whatever. Like, everybody, I, I don't want my house to be the one, the ugly house on the block. I want it to look nice also. But, you know, like parking my, the, the van or the Kia on the side as opposed to parking it in the swale, I don't. It's a legislative slash political decision by the council. I'm a town attorney. I've been a town attorney for 33 years now. And one of my favorite things in the world to do is look at those people on the dais and go, that's a political question. Don't you love doing that? Not a legal one, yes, sir. That is not a legal question. It's a political question. Remember, here's, here's a good one. We used to have piles of people in here because they had ladders on the top, top of their trucks in their vans. And I told those people, you know who you need to see? You need to go see the council because I have to follow the law as it's written. I can't vary the law as it's written. I don't have that power. And those wonderful people went to the council 
and they got the town ordinance changed to allow ladders on trucks. So all the people with the air conditioning companies and the plumbing companies and everyone else, the roofers of the world, could all leave their ladders and not have to take them off at night. I, I have another. So you either have to go and convince them that 22 feet is okay, or you have to come out with a 20-foot trailer. Your 20-foot trailer would fit the bill and it'd keep you out of trouble, or you could put it somewhere else, which you don't want to do. But I can tell from this picture, they could have gotten you for the sod. They could have gotten you for the trash can. They're just trying to fix the biggest problem, which is the trailer. So what's, what dates are you can, offering him? Can I at least ask for some time to... Oh, no, that's what I'm getting right now. What are the dates? Because I have, to get, I, I have to get a vehicle... And then I have to put this for sale, and then I have to... Right, I understood. It, it's going to be like, it's not going to be an easy task. No, I'm and, talking a couple months here. We're talking well, we're, we're, this 11. was actually first written in June, so we're already a couple months into the process. Uh, so. I'm going to give him some time now that he's standing here in front of me and doing this. So what's the R11 thing? We're, I'm sorry. We're asking for compliance by 929 or the 10 I'm going to give him another month. Give me give me, give me, me some not 1011s. We had the 1011 here. 1027, 11, $25 a day. Gotcha. So you have until October 27th to get it. If you remove it now and put it somewhere else just for a little while before the 27th of October and you get them to come out and inspect it and tell so they can assure you it's or assure themselves it's gone, then your problem is taken care of until you bring something back. And hopefully okay. the something you bring back will follow the criteria, which is 20 and less than 10. I have... A, kind of a second part of this, uh, if I may. Can I, or where can I, can I show you, like, if I have, because I was looking at 20-foot uh, trailers, but I want to make sure, can I you get You will it, talk like, to the code officer. Can I get it pre-approved? or That would be a wonderful idea. I'd like to, I am planning on buying or getting this trailer and the specifications are this is this acceptable and then they will talk to their supervisors and or their counsel and they will give you some sort of response correct uh, yes like if i have the tag like the picture of the plate that, well you're gonna you're says, gonna you're gonna do the yeah. whatever it is model whatever because that's gonna have the specs or if it's homemade you're gonna measure from the trailer tongue to the back of the trailer and you're gonna and for your own purposes when you buy this thing or whatever you do with it, you're going to measure from the trailer tongue to the back of the trailer and make sure it's 20 feet or less just for your own education. Like it doesn't go, like, it seems to, I'm not like a trailer expert or anything, but it seems that a, they measure the cab or whatever you call it of the trailer. So if a, I'm talking tongue. So it's the part that hitches on your vehicle to the end of the tail light. That's your 20 foot. So 20 feet is not necessarily a 20 foot trailer. Oh God, no. No, you're going to have two or three foot of tongue on it. Okay. Then the other question about the driveway is. Well, we don't have a driveway issue right now, and we're not creating one, so don't create one for us. Let's leave it all alone right now. We're only here. On the prohibited trailer. So. Oh, because they told me I couldn't park on the side. Of well, the you can't park on the side unless you change your, if you, unless you ask for a permit to do something other than grass. You have to get a permit issued for pavers or for concrete or for asphalt. Any type of pervious surface will require a permit. And I've been trying to get a couple estimates just to see about how much it would be. And the one guy said that there's concrete like underneath there on the side of the house. Well, the picture's gone, but you can see there's only a little strip of grass. And I was wondering why they only put sod or like three feet of sod. And they're saying that there's concrete underneath the surface. I have no idea why concrete underneath the surface would be really good for you if you want to put a concrete on top of it. It just provides a better base. But if that's, there's already concrete there, wouldn't that be? That's not on the site plan. That's probably just buried debris. That has nothing to do with anything. 
according to this picture I'm looking at right now, are we looking at the exhibit four up there? It's up there. Yeah. I mean, you know. Like where where the vehicles park, they're yeah. saying there's concrete underneath, un, under there? That's, like that's, they, that's not. If there's concrete underneath that car, it's trash. It's debris. It's just in the ground. There's no concrete pad under there. Okay. You have to go get that permitted if you want to do that. All I'm trying to say is the trailer has to be out by 1027. I've given you an extra month. They want it out at the end of the month. So you, this gives you some time to try to work it out. And the other the other code section special magistrate is a finding of fact. And the vehicle parked on the front lawn is a finding of fact because you've moved it already. So that's good. So you're taking care of the one problem. Work on the next problem, and that way you can have a you know, nineteen foot, eleven inch trailer that's only nine and a half, nine and nine tenths feet tall. Okay, so can I just show one of the ladies this picture? No, this is not the time to do it. You can't. You can't even talk to them without some specifications. All you're doing is showing a picture, and they're supposed to guess how long it is. No, the the the, the plaque from the trailer like the actual now you're, you're going to want to get the entire specs before you talk to them a plaque is not going to help that's like showing them the door jam on a car you know it's got a vent and a couple of tire things on it and it's oh, not going to help actually says 20 feet that's why i wanted to you 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 for your purposes want to measure this thing or you want to get the specs you want to know if the 20 feet is the box or the box and the tongue okay otherwise she can't tell Okay. They could say 20-foot trailer. I can say that's a 20-foot boat all day long. It may be 19.5. It may be 22.2. I don't know. You don't know. They won't know without the specs. So you need to get the actual specifications for the trailer. If it's been manufactured by a trailer company, they'll know. They'll know exactly how much it weighs, how tall it is, how wide it is, et cetera. And can I make another comment sure. while I'm here? Uh, I don't know if you guys or any of you, I don't know your particular roles, but when I had to move the box truck, I had, I really had, like, I was trying to sell it. I had nowhere to put it. I had to go get a spot at the storage place, which is, if you don't know, it's super expensive, like $250 a month. But they also have the Royal Palm Beach parking lot. Um, if there's any way... They could make it so you could park a like like any oversized vehicle there. I kind of think that's the whole purpose of that parking lot. But it's not they, though. It's not though because that turns into a commercial storage yard, and people put trailers just like that in there, and then they operate their businesses out of them. So that's why it's limited to recreational vehicles and boats. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't. Those are not allowed in the village's RV lot for a specific reason because those turn into commercial trailers parked in the village's lot. That's why it's only limited to boats and RVs, not trailers like that. Because they don't want trailers. This trailer there? No. No. Really? Really? Sure. Well, I could at least get it there till I sell it. No. Really? No, find a find a friend in the acreage. That's your best je your best bet. Move your trailer over there. You got till the twenty seventh of October to figure this out. So. We've given oh, you I time. I could park it there. I was talking <clears> about the box truck from before. I had no option. Like there, there are other places to go. I can't park that in the lot either. I thought I thought that was for trailers, recreational vehicles. That's, That's not a recreational vehicle. Right. Box truck is not an RV. No, um, no, no, not the box truck. The the trailer. The trailer is not an RV. It's it's not set it up for living. It has to be living. a self-moving vehicle. Like no, it has has to be. Something that's not used for commercial purposes. There's no bed in there. There's no stove in there. You know, this is you're it's arguing a, you're arguing semantics with me now, and it's not going to help anybody. And we have 65 more cases to get. And we to. have 65 cases to go, and they want to go home sometime tonight. All right. All right. You'll get an order in the mail, sir. All right. 11, thank you. 10, 27, 11, 9, 25. Thank Everybody you. Have a good evening. Thank you too. Going back in the agenda to page one. <clears throat> Back to the fine assessment hearings, case 22-0719-102-01, Penzance Lane, Airless M. and Luis E. Bisterio.
Everyone thinks I have such awesome power. Laws. No, they don't apply to you. Okay, number one. With a bullet. That old building department has opened its file cabinets again, haven't they? Mm -hmm. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, permit information. Okay. Sign green card equals service. Poor people are going to get fined for not paying attention. This one's been out for 13 days, 325 and continuing. 325 plus continuing is granted. Sorry, I missed that. Thank you. 22-0961, 123 Ponce de Leon Street, SFR 2012, 1 Florida LLC. <clears throat> I'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. These people have vendors. Come on. All right. Sign green card equals service. Again, it's been out for 13 days, 325 and continuing. 325 plus continuing is granted. Thank you. 22-0632, 209 Las Palmas Street, Leonardo, F. Molina, and Alexandra N. Naranjo. Are you marked again? Yes. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order assess or finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, AS400 information. Exhibit four pictures and exhibit five affidavit of compliance. Oh, they smudged this green card all up, but somebody find it first. All right, so what is the damage on this one? This one was affidavit? out of compliance for five days, so 125 and not continuing. 125, no continuing is granted. 22-0672, 143 Heron Parkway, Juan Diego E. Pichardo. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, previous order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three. AS 400 information. COVID green card equals service. This one's been out for 13 days, 325 and continuing. 325 plus continuing is granted. 22 0683 210 Titania Way, Brianna Espada, and Jonathan Jackson. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, AS 400 permit <coughs> information. <coughs> yeah, I see this is a 19. Series permit. These people work their way all the way up to the show. All right, we have green card for service. Again, it's been out for 13 days, 325 and continuing. Granted, I need a stamp. 22 0802 177 Cordoba Circle, Xavier Edwards. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, AS 400 permit information. And Exhibit 4, pictures. You can see um, all the vegetation on the side of the home and across the front. It was removed. Okay. <clears throat> all righty. What would you like? Again, 13 days, 325 and continuing. Granted. 22-0829, 107 Cortez Avenue, Winsome Richards. I would like to enter the following documents into <coughs> evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, AS400 permit information. Okay. They even spelled their name. Oh, no. Good sign, green card service. Again, it's been out of compliance 13 days, 325 and continuing. Granted. 22-0830, 162 Granada Street, Beverly E. and Langdon M. Fisher. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, AS400, permit info. <coughs> Sign green card equals service. Again, been out of compliance 13 days, 325 and continuing. I think they should take you to Ocean's 1 for lunch. It would be cheap. The building department owes you guys. <coughs> it's only five ninety nine a pop unless you're drinking. We can't drink during the day tonight. 22-0849, 142 Meadowlark Drive, also Asset Company 1, LLC. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, AS400 permit information. <coughs> Sign green card equals service. Again, out of compliance. By USPS. Someone has interesting initials. <laughs> Again, out of compliance, 13 days, 325 and continuing. Granted. 
22-0068-11001 Southern Boulevard, IBT Southern Royal Palm Beach 1031 LLC. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation and USPS verification or USPS tracking information. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership and Exhibit 3, permit information. <clears throat> Tracking confirm a service. Now they need to buy you dessert too. Again, out of compliance, 13 days, 325 and continuing. Granted. 22-0726-11061 Southern Boulevard, IVT, Southern Royal Palm Beach, 1031 LLC. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, uh, order <coughs> finding violation in USPS. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, permit information. Track and confirm is service. Again, been out for 13 days, 325 and continuing. And says this is basically the same people again? Yep, 22-0727-11061, Southern Boulevard, IBT, Southern Royal Palm Beach, 1031 LLC. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation with the USPS track and confirm. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, permit information. Track and confirm with service. Again, been out for 13 days, 325 and continuing. Granted. 22-0839-12960, Palms West Drive, Palms West Hospital, Inc., Ducharme, McMillan and Associates. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3 is 400 permit information. Wow, I'm impressed by this thing. I'm going to be an actor. It's really interesting. Do <laughs> you see this? Do you see that face? Yeah. This guy's got a big snake. All right, we have service for the drug. Again, out for 13 days, 325 and continuing. I would think the doctors would pay attention, but no. Granted. 22-0954-11061, Southern Boulevard, IVT, Southern Royal Palm Beach, 1031 LLC. How many? I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, order assessing fine. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, permit information. I don't know. This may have all gone together in the same circular file and gotten destroyed because it's not going to show good response. Sign green card, April service, 325 Again, plus continuing. Yep, 325 and continuing, thank you. Repeat violation hearings, case 22-1393 is being removed. Good. Violation hearings, 22-0646-11949, Park Central. Anthony G. and Erica Michelle Swan. <coughs> so have you been to Central? Because I saw the ladies there eating chicken sandwiches when we went. Did you? Yeah, Linda and, Linda and uh, Dina were there. I'm like, hey, <laughs> look at me. Here's my wife. Did you like my wife? Yeah. Thank Very you. nice lady. Thanks. She's so sweet. I wonder why she ended up with me. <laughs> uh, affidavit of service equals service. You can proceed. Code section 6221055, permit 171929 is expired. This was written on 41822. The notice is, excuse me, the notice of violation was mailed out certified mail on 42022 and was posted. The notice of hearing was mailed out 72922 and also posted. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, permit information. Ah, so we found the drawer with the 17 permit file. This one we're asking for compliance by 929 or appearance at the October 12th fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 22-0957 is being pulled. 22-1004-10103, Mikado Lane, Andrew J. Kranz. I wish she only had the description. You have, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Thank you. You're good. Uh, code section 2318 B3B, B2D, 14-2, and 12 port c Parking on the front lawn, restricted trailer, and public view. Miscellaneous items, recycle bin, and public view. I observed this on 6622. The notice of violation was mailed out 61022 and was signed for on 62122. 
The notice of hearing uh, was mailed out 72722, and I have actual service. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. Exhibit 5, affidavit of compliance. All right. We have a somewhat filled out green card. I know. It must have worked because you got a renewed card. And we have service. Finding a fact. Oh, I like the, the sort of nice dark sort of film noir quality of the pictures here. You don't want to make it look too bright. All right, so 929. No, 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 finding oh. a fact. Oh, finding a fact? Yep. After all that, finding a fact is granted. Thank you. 22-0113-10116, Mikado Lane, Brian, and Leah Boyd. Code section 15132, landscape edging placed in the swell. I observed this on 624-22. The notice violation was mailed out 627-22 and was signed for on 7-622. The notice of hearing is mailed out 72722. And oh, sorry. Out of order here. And I have actual service on this. Okay. So you talked um, to them. We, we'd like to enter the following into evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit four pictures, exhibit five affidavit of compliance. One little solo shot. That one was left over, one little solo shot. I guess so. Yeah. This one. Group me. <laughs> All right, so is this another finding? Yes, sir. Finding it back. Granted. 22-1015, A37, Azalea Drive, Jacqueline Lo Lois. Code section 14-4A and 14-2, disabled vehicles. Uh, vehicles uh, vehicle does not move every 30 days, miscellaneous items. I observed this on 6 10 the notice of violation was mailed out 61622 and was signed for on 62422. The notice of hearing was mailed out 7822 and was signed for on 72522. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, pictures. We had that camera. They never got one. I'm sure. All right. Do you have service the... Uh Green card, or would you like uh, section 14 4A, which is the disabled vehicles defining a fact? Okay, and then 14 2, we're asking for compliance by 929 or the 10 12 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. 929 10 12 25 is granted. Thank you. 22 1022 749 Orchid Drive, Alexandra and Julio Balmaceda. Code section 1557 and 12 4 C, the grass and weeds exceeds height allowed, garbage can and recycle bin. Public view. I observed this 61022. The notice of violation was mailed out 61622, and the notice of hearing was mailed out 62422. The notice of hearing was mailed out 81722, and I have actual service. We'd like to enter the following into evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation, Exhibit 2, notice of hearing, Exhibit 3, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 4, pictures. Okay, actual service is service. We all see it's going to ask each other. Again, compliance by 929 or the 1012 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Okay. 929, 1012, 25 is granted. Thank you. 22-1062 is being pulled. Thank goodness. 22-1064, 908, Camellia Drive, Jennifer and Matthew Sparing. Code section 622, excuse me, 6-22105.5, permit 20059 expired. Um, this was written on 61522. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 61622 and was signed for on 62422. The notice of hearing was mailed out 71922 7 and was posted. I'd like to enter the following into evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing and affidavit of service. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, permit information. All right. You have service. What would you like? Compliance service by October 27th. For the 11 9 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 22 1106, 
12028 Greenway Circle South, Greenway Village South Association, 1 through 4, Inc. Code Section 06190A1, the leak, excuse me, leak in Unit 104 on the porch. Uh, this was written on 62422, the notice of violation was mailed out certified mail on 62722 and was signed for on 7622. The notice of hearing was mailed out 72222 and was posted. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing and Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Pictures. All right, uh, service via posting. I'm just amused by the legal. I'm trying to figure it out. The legal? Yeah. Greenway Village, SoCon, no one Central Clubhouse. Yeah. But, huh? South Condo, South, North. probably. Yes. Condominium. Oh, but I North that one, one Central Clubhouse. No one. Oh, number one Fine. central clubhouse? I don't know. They write them weird on, on property appraiser. Yeah. Uh, or nitrous oxide. <laughs> um, wow. It's actually got a lot of crack and crumbles to it. I'm kind of amused. Okay. Those pictures were actually uh, turned over to us by Greenway. I'm probably going, hey, this is probably crappy nasty. Okay. So what? They're compliance, telling on themselves. Compliance by 1027 or 119 or twenty five dollar day fine. Granted. Thank you. Twenty two dash one 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 six one zero zero eight eight Mikado Lane, Obison and Mabel Corum. Code section O six one ninety D fifteen one thirty two planning areas are overgrown. I observed this on six twenty four twenty two. The notice of violation was mailed out six twenty seven twenty two and was signed for on seven six twenty two. The notice of hearing was mailed out 72722 and was posted. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing and affidavit of service. Exhibit 3, affidavit of, excuse me, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. All right, signed green card for the notice. Posting for the notice of hearing. Picture, picture, picture. Someone needs to put the illegal out. We're asking for compliance by 929 or the 1012 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 22 1152 276 Ponce de Leon Street, Progress Residential Borrower 5 LLC. Code section 14206190A13, miscellaneous items and driveway is stained. I observed this on 62822. The notice of violation is mailed out certified mail on 629. 22 and was signed for on 7622. The notice of hearing is mailed out 72222 and signed for on 72422. We'd like to enter the following into evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. Exhibit 5, affidavit of compliance. Yeah, I thought they would have a vendor. Mm -hmm. yeah, signatures have gone downhill. Yeah. That's horrible. Okay, so. Finding a fact is granted. Yes. Thank you. 22-1154-10115 Patience Lane, Joseph Guina. Code section 6-22105.5. Permit 201022 has expired. This was written on 62822. The notice of violation was mailed out certified mail on 62922 and was signed for on 71322. The notice of hearing was sent out certified mail 730. 22 and was signed for on 8322. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, permanent information. Signed green card, equal service. So much easier with the money. We're asking for compliance by 1027 or the 119 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 22 1209 172 Royal Pine Circle South, Progress Residential Borrower 1 LLC. Code section 124C, garbage can and recycle bins in public view. I observed this on 7822. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 7822 and was signed for on 71122. The notice of hearing was mailed out 73022 and was signed for on 8322. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, pictures. I'm shocked I don't have a finding of fact. Okay. We put this one on the schedule. You have a signed green card, so you have service. This one we're asking for compliance by 929 or the 1012 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 22 1214 757 Camellia Drive, Markinson and Rosemary Pierre Benjamin. Oh, the macaroni. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Service. Service. I need to go get that. 
in the back. What? You, you've gone from like short agenda to long agenda. Can you guys short to medium to long? We're trying to work our way back up. <coughs> yeah, last time it was like seven or eight pages and seven fifty-seven shows, and it got we got it out here like an hour and a half or so. Yeah. It was nice and good. Back. This is my this is my third code hearing this week. This is yeah. a longer one tonight. I mean, you know, North Palm Beach, which is my occasional, showed up on Monday, and then Tuesday in Cluiston. Um, Cluiston's starting to grow on me, by the way. That's good. And number three with you. Oh, yeah, a wonderful uh, Mexican restaurant that I'm truly enjoying, but I found a, a Latin bakery cafe that does breakfast, so I think I might try them next and get maybe a cafecito and a pescadito or something. That's good. They even have a golf course I might try. Okay. Code section 9406190A15D and E, 15132 and 1540. Fence, <coughs> fences in disrepair, sidewalk stained, planting areas are overgrown, grass growing over, over the fence and under the fence, plants are growing over the sidewalk. I observed this on 71322. The notice of violation was sent out certified mail on 719. Yeah, I don't have service on this. Oh. You don't? Oh. No, I don't. Sorry. All right, we'll pull it. Pass. Yeah, 22, 12, 14 is being pulled. This was going to be the fun one, too. We've had 20, all these things. 22 dash 1227, 1120 Chorus Way, Arnaldo L. Delgado. Okay, code section 2318B1A, prohibited vehicle. I observed this on 7-15-22. The notice of violation and notice of hearing were mailed together on 7-19-22 and was signed for on 7-21-22. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation and notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, pictures. Semi-tractor. Can I choose this too? Because I got all the power. No, all I can do is follow the code. Code says no semis. I don't because I don't All right, is that uh, 920 something? or? No, it's a finding of fact. Finding of fact, he moved. Okay. 22 dash 12 8, excuse me, 1285, 321 River Bluff Lane, Martha C. Espinosa, and Jorge Henriquez. Code section 6 dash 22105.5, permit 201286 is expired. This was written on 72122. The notice of violation was mailed out 72322 and was signed for on 72922. The notice of hearing was signed, excuse me, mailed 8822 and was signed for on 81022. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, permanent information. <coughs> I like the signature of this when she delivers. <laughs> All right, so you do have an actual signature by the lady person that made the bid for the BMW. We're asking for compliance by 1027 or the 119 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 22 1293 1356 Thornbank Lane, Lane, Moses R. and Rosaline M. Rahan. Code section 622 105.5, permit 213291 is expired. This was written on 72122. The notice of violation was mailed out 72322 and was signed for on 72522. The notice of hearing was mailed out 81722 and was signed for on 81922. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, permanent information. All right, so you have a totally signed green card on your notice of violation. You have an actual signed green card on your notice of hearing. Service. We're asking for compliance by 1027 or the 119 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 22 1337 is being pulled. You can do a lot more of those. 22 0275 is being. Oh, excuse me, I skipped over one. 22 0843 712 Royal Palm Beach Boulevard. Yamna Y. Fernandez. Code section 622 105.5, permit 181741 is expired. This was written on 5-16-22. The notice of violation was mailed out 5-17-22 and was posted. The notice of hearing was mailed out 7-22-22 and also posted. 
Um, we'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing and Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Permit Information. I'd like to name the initials go YY. Gotta do something to stay awake. So, compliance granted. by 1027 or the 1112 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 22-0275 is being pulled. 22-0499-110 Vizcaya Avenue, Edgar O. Gonzalez and Angel O. Vasquez. Say that 10 times fast. I know. <laughs> Edgar O. and Angel O. Code sections 2318B. Oh, oh, hold, hold on. on. Hold Give on, me that on. back. Oh, well. Hold on. This is wrong. Yes, it is. It's totally wrong. All right. Come on, Margaret. Get your stuff together. Code section 622-108.4. Pavers installed without a permit. This violation was observed on 32122. <laughs> it was sent certified mail 32122 and signed for on 32822. Notice of hearing went certified mail. 71422 and was signed for in 71822. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence Exhibit 1 Notice of Violation, Exhibit 2 Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 3 Verification of Ownership, Exhibit 4 Pictures, and Exhibit 5 AS400 Information. I like the way you keep giving things to Hunter and pulling them back. <laughs> All right, you have service. Which Com one is this? Compliance 10? by 1027 or 119, fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 22-0793-266 Las Palmas Street, Tracy C. Schmidt. All right. The code section here is 2657-917-40-1557. and Description, canopy without a permit, fence without a permit, not maintaining the water's edge, and high grass beams. This violation was observed on 5522 and sent certified mail on 51022 and then posted. Notice of hearing was mailed on 722-22 and signed for on 725-22. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation and Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. Exhibit 4, Pictures. And Exhibit 5, AS400 Permit Information showing no canopy no permit. No canopy hold. permit, no fence permit, and then they don't like the water track. That pretty much sums it up. What would you like? Compliance by 1027 11925. Granted. 22 0974 154 Sandpiper Avenue, Lewis, Luis Bellman, and Christopher Garcia. Okay, this code section is 144. The description is disabled vehicle. This violation was observed on 527 22. It was sent certified mail and returned unclaimed and then posted. Notice of hearing was sent on 8-2-22, and um, Margaret has a message here where she spoke to the owner, homeowner informing them of the hearing. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation with the Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing, along with the message informing them of the hearing. Exhibit Three is verification of ownership, and exhibit four is pictures. <clears throat> After the service, are you looking at the car on the motorcycle or just the motorcycle? In the pictures, they're just the motorcycle. Uh, the, motorcycle. the motorcycle. The motorcycle. It's in the same, it's in the same spot on both pictures. Yeah. And the other 730 picture there. Too, the there were multiple there. cars, but I think it is just the motorcycle uh, at this point. Just pictures, I guess. Unless that red car's been done. No. Either or. Oh, Margaret's a psychic person. She could know. All right. 1027 or? Uh, no, 929. Complies by 929 or 1012 or $25 a day fine. Granted. 22-0997. 234 Sandpiper Avenue, Patricia P. Ward. <clears throat> the code section is 6190A1. 95, 740 is being removed, 942, and 124C. 
The description is screen enclosure is missing. Hedges exceed the height allowed. Fence needs fences in disrepair and garbage can and public view wall of stain. This notice of violation was sent out on 6322 and it was signed for on 6622. Notice of hearing was sent 71422 and it was signed for on 71822. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Pictures. Looks like someone went for boat ride, but this is like from across the canal. Yes. This looks like a mess. Is that what we're, we're dealing with here? Just a mess? Um, yeah, it's yeah. the lattice fencing is falling down. The lattice that they have. All right, so this, yeah, the enclosures, hedges are too tall, grass not maintained, all of that. That one's coming off. The grass is not maintained to the water's okay, edge. That that's 740, 7-40. That's being removed. All right, so that was the one I scratched through on the top number. So yes, sir. They, they did maintain it to the water's edge. Okay, so the rest of it. All right, and the rest of it's 1027? Uh, just for the record, I don't believe they fixed that other part. It's just being removed because there's an issue with... Um, I think the photos, but the other ones are compliance by 1027 or 119 or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 22 1030 is being removed. Good. Fold. 22 1176 is being fold. 22 1208. 1102 Stardust Way. Thomas Riccobono and Alexandria Scalisi. Normally in the year, I could mow twice a week if I really want to. This year, we're so far down on water. It's going to be amazing to see how well we do this year. Mm -hmm. I can't get it. I mean, it's like I'm barely mowing enough on, during the week, once a week, just to have it happen. The code section is 1557, 15132619083 and 5. The description, high grass and weeds are overgrown. Um, High grass and weeds. Grass and weeds are overgrown um, and growing onto the sidewalk. Sidewalk and driveway are stained. This violation was observed on 7-7-22. It was sent certified mail 7-8-22 and signed for on 7-11-22. Notice of hearing went 7-30-22 and it was posted on 8-31-22. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing and Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Pictures. Okay. <clears throat> so. I think they cut the grass. I'm pretty sure. I mean, if you look at the pictures from 728, see all the grass over here on the right-hand side. And then you look at the 913 picture, and it's nicely mowed. You don't want to just do that as you're finding everything else is kind of just like spill. And said so she was done. Okay. So the grass looks good. I mean, giving them credit for doing something. So finding the facts on the grass and get them on everything else. Them. Which is the grass? No, it looks trimmed. Okay. It's going to be 1557 and 15132. All right. So that will be a finding of that. And. The other section 061985 comply by 929 or 1012 or $25 a day fine. Okay, well, let me finish that one, finding the fact on that. And this one is 927? 929. 29, 10, 10 12, 12, 25. Got it. 25. 22-1213, thank you. 22-1213, 101 Oreo Court, David H. Crick. Ah, the code section is 942. 6, 135, and 1540. The description, fences and disrepair. House numbers are not posted on the structure. Branches um, are hanging over the sidewalk. Um, the 1540 we're going to remove. Oh, 1540. Oh, I have that for compliance. All on three of them. Yeah. 06, 135, 1540, and 942. So this violation was observed on 7 11 22. It was sent certified mail on 7 14 22 and signed for 
on 7-18-22. Notice of hearing was sent certified mail 8-4-22 and signed 4 8 6 -22. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. And Exhibit 5, affidavit of compliance. So it's all a finding effect? Uh, yes. Finding effect is granted. Thank you. 22-1217 is being pulled. 22-1228 is being pulled. Good, good, good. 22-1229-3107 Strang Lane, Farony, and James E. Bickerstaff. Okay. Code section 622-105.5 and 91. Uh, permit number 2013-59 has expired. This violation was written on 7-20-22 and sent certified mail 7-23-22 and signed for on 7-25-22. Notice of hearing was sent certified mail 8-4-22 and signed for on 8-6-22. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, AS-400 Permit Information. All right, so you have signed green cards for service. I can't wait for the superintendent. So I'm not getting any inspections during COVID. This is the COVID, COVID batch. Yeah. Before this you had the 18th and the 19th, so people get more people. This one we're asking. Is for 929 or 1027? No, 1027, 11, 9, and 25. Granted. Thank you. But we were doing different things. They could do pictures and all kinds of stuff. Oh, room, room uh -huh. inspection. So. Hold on. I didn't read it yet. You ready? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I missed one. 22 1304 107 Cortez Avenue, Winston Richards. That's the second Winston, I believe. The code section 622 105.5. The description is permit number 21 2903 has expired. Um, this violation was written on 721 22. It was sent certified mail 726 22 and signed for on 728 22. Notice of hearing was mailed on 8-17-22 and posted on 9-2-22. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation. Exhibit 2, Notice of Hearing and Affidavit of Service. Exhibit 3, Verification of Ownership. And Exhibit 4, Permit Information. So all it was solar. actually hand-delivered. Yeah, solar, all these solar things. I don't know. Half of them sound so scammish. This one we're asking for compliance by 1027 or 119 or $25 a day fine. Granted. 22 1307 154 Cordoba Circle, Faith P. Williams. The code section 622 105.5, permit number 213125 has expired. This violation was written on 72122 and sent certified mail 72622 and signed for on 72822. Notice of hearing was mailed on 8822 and signed for on 81822. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation. Exhibit 2, notice of hearing. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 4, AS400 permit information. All right, fine. Green cards for service. Again, we're asking for compliance by 1027 or the 119 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 22 1332 242 Sandpiper Avenue, FKH SFR C1LP. Code section 6190A12. Description roof repairs do not match existing roof material. The code. This violation was observed on 72822. It was sent certified mail on 73. 730 with the notice of violation, notice of hearing, um, and it was signed for on 8522. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, pictures. So what they did was they did what they considered to be a repair, but it's a whole back of the roof and you can't do That's more than 25 percent you have to now he has to do a whole new roof yeah, uh, yeah it looks like they just did the, the paper or whatever it has to they didn't cover it it's with, like a peel and stick that they put on it but they didn't cover it with a 
three tap dimensional one. They didn't cover yeah, it with they, metal. Yeah, but they, they cover still with can't do it. She has eight one two on there. So okay. for your agenda, special magistrate, we're adding a two. It was inadvertently left off the agenda. Okay. So when are we doing this one? What are the dates? The 1027, comply by 1027. Okay, 1027, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, uh, that's rescinding an order assessing fine. 22-0565 is rescinding a previous order finding delinquency and assessing fine. It's 10107 Southern Boulevard. JBL Village Shops LLC, JBL Village Shops 2 LLC, and JBL Village Shops 3 LLC. I'll enter the order and the verification of ownership if you need to see it. Yeah. Someone, someone got a little hectic here because the village is lowercase and there's no L on it. This is getting to the end of Hunter's agenda, and she was tired. And what are you and talking about? Falling off and the village. I pay attention um, to this stuff. I pay way I too much. I didn't. So <laughs> she thought she was going to slip it by me, but no. Next is health safety welfare. Well, you all right, stop. It. What are we doing on these people? What are the dates? It's rescinding order. Uh, rescinding granted. Thank you. Health Safety Welfare Hearings 22-1427, 855 Azalea Drive, Leroy and Norma M. Gillespie. All right, these are wonderful. How is this grass growing? Huh? Are, they, are they watering their weeds or something? Is it someone? Cool. As long as I get service in all three cases, the three orders will be fine. The third one's being pulled. Oh, third one's being pulled. Sparrow? Huh? 855. Sparrow's being pulled. Sparrow's been pulled. No, I pulled the third one. This sparrow part, 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 part. This was the last one that we moved. This one's pulled. This one's pulling through that would have been recent. Okay, sorry. 22 1427 is being pulled. All right, that's the sparrow? No, that's oh. 855 Azalea Drive. Oh, so, so sparrow's not being pulled, or is it? Yes, sparrow is also okay, being pulled. Okay, so we only have one of the three. Do you have the middle one? Yes, sir. 22 1441 107 Princess Court, Ann L. Lebowski. Code section 1557, grass and weeds exceeds height allowed. Observe this on 9622, the notice of violation and notice of hearing were mailed out 9722 and were posted. I'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, and affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and exhibit 3, pictures. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, I have to retract there. This one did not get mailed. I just posted it. Posting's I, fine. I just noticed it this morning. Posting works. Okay. 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 Like, do you want to see it again? Yeah, you can. Okay. That's fine. Once again, seven to ten inches below our normal average rainfall. Yes, these people need to grow really green. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just amazing. It's like so the order like golf, and, and normally during the the summer, you hit a ball and it goes splat into the fairway. And it, you know, you got to take it out of the puddle or something. This year, it's just rock hard. Yeah. It's just, all right, so. The order uh, before you is a one-time abatement. One-time abatement. It allows Somebody for. Fix it up. Today yep, allows for recovery the of the 286. And then appearance at the 1012 fine assessment hearing. Thank you. Vision or scene granted. Uh, do we have anything else? Minutes? Yes, we have minutes. See, I knew we would have something else. Please let the record reflect that I am signing the July minutes. Is there anything else to be brought before the code enforcement board? No, sir. Thank nothing you. else is to be brought. Seven thirty-six. Man, this is like a real meeting. This is back up to your twelve pages. You were like down to a nine or eight page agenda. Okay, this was a longer or a standardized meeting as opposed to the shorter ones I was getting you.